All right. <coughs> Hello. Welcome. Modern techniques for keeping your code dry. Uh, I don't like this code. I don't hate it per se. It's, it's not terrible. It's not wrong. It's just, it's a bit annoying. And the thing I find annoying is this repetition. Because we have roughly one third of this code doesn't add any information. It's uh, noise. Uh, I don't mind talkative code as long as the, the, the chatter helps bring clarity, explains things, but these don't do that. But it's not wrong. It's not a problem. I would never complain about this in a, in a code review. It just annoys me. So welcome again to Modern Techniques for Keeping Your Code Dry. Uh, I'm Bjorn Faller. I've been doing C++ for too long, I think. Uh, I work for NetInsight, a few minutes walk from here. Incidentally, NetInsight is the next host for the next event, just so you know. Hope to see you there. Uh, this talk is not so much about the dry, dry as in the don't repeat yourself princ principle. When uh, we talk about writing dry code, we, we mean avoiding harmful repetition. The example I showed was not harmful just annoys my sense of aesthetics. But this talk is about techniques. And I will drive those techniques with an example that is arguably quite silly. But there you are. The techniques are useful, in my opinion. We'll see if you think so too. So we have this. We have some state type. Idle connecting, connected, disconnecting, disconnected did and we have an assertion and like I said I find this code a little bit annoying. So what can we do about this? Because I want to get rid of things that annoys me. So let's try a variadic function template. It's easy, we can write this. Uh, is any of and uh, the state type and a bunch of t's. I don't know, are you, are you familiar with uh, C++17 fold expressions? Or is that new to you? Okay, roughly one third of the hands went up. So I'll, I'll go through it. See, the fold expressions is this uh, parenthesized expression there. The fold expression is always in the parentheses and it repeats something about uh, a variadic template argument, in this case, t's. So what happens is that this sub-expression s equals t's is repeated over the dots with uh, logical or in between. So you get s equals the first argument, or s equals the second argument, or s equals the third argument, etc., etc. So it's a, a convenient shorthand when you have uh, variadic templates and you want to collapse them into one uh, expression. So it's, it's really handy. So I can write like this. Assert is any of state and the alternatives. And uh, well, it did take away the repetition. But uh, seriously. <laughs> this is absolutely horrible code. If you wrote this and I was reviewing it, I would not be nice to you. Because it's, well, actually, I would probably try to be polite, but I would politely say that this is utterly unreadable trash code. Uh, because when you, when, you see, when you see is any of and state, comma, idle, comma, disconnecting, comma, disconnected, you have absolutely no idea what that means without looking into the implementation of is any of. This is, this is not good code. So scrap that idea. It, it wasn't good. Well, well, worth trying. Worth trying. So a variadic non-type non template parameter function. Yeah, that really rolls off the tongue catchy. So we can say is any of and we have the states that we want to compare with as template parameters. So this improves things. We, we, we can now write is any of idle comma disconnecting comma disconnected and state. 
this is better, I think. It, it's, it, it's at least possible quite easily to understand what, what is meant by this expression without having to, to read the, the function body of uh, is any of. Uh, we can make this a little bit more generalized if we're, uh, if we're using C plus 17. So we can, we can then use auto for non-type template parameters, which means that we can now use is any of for any type. Well, actually not any type, because there are limitations to what types you can use as non-type template parameters. But enum labels, uh, integers, integer constants, fine, no problem. But not all. We, we cannot compare, say, strings. doesn't work. And it's only const expert values. We can never compare with uh, the value of a runtime variable. And it's Yoda speak. You're familiar with how Yoda speaks in backwards grammar. It's, uh, sure, it works, but it's awkward. So, uh, I don't know. It, 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 I, I don't think that was good either. But it was worth a try. It, it, it's stepwise refinement. It's a little bit better. <coughs> so can we do a, construct an object and then do a test? There was a few years ago a, a little bit of a Twitter contest about who could write the shortest code to make this kind of, of check if a value is one of a number of variants. I had a stake in that one. I don't remember if I won. But <coughs> it is small, and it's not pretty, but it does fit in a tweet with the God Balls link. L let's e express that in slightly more readable code. So we have a function template is in that returns lambda, that captures the value. So we can write is in state. And the return value of is in state is that lambda that has captured I as the t is now the value of state. And then we call, call that lambda with the alternatives, which are expanded into this full expression that you're familiar with. It does work with all types. It looks absolutely horrible. <laughs> There's not a lot of information in there. You, you have to know what is in means, really have to know what it, what it means, how to read the code to understand this. So it, it's two terse. But it was f a few fun days on Twitter. It really was. And then nothing really happened. We can. We can try to be a bit more explicit, though. We can, we can construct uh, an object. The lambda is actually, it, it is an object uh, of a, an unnameable type that has a value. We, we can make this explicit. We can have our own type. And then we can, instead of having just a function call operator, we, we can have a, a function with a name that explains what we're doing. So I have this uh, struct template named is that captures a t and the template member function any of that expands into the, the fold expression that you've seen. And then the C++ 17 thing, if you're not familiar with this, a, a deduction guide for constructor template argument deduction. This is, what this says to the compiler is that pretend that is is a function. And when you see a call to it, do, do deduction like you do for, for the parameter types as you do for, for function templates. And then we have the, the guide, this arrow, and say, when, when you see it called as a function with a value of a type t, then assume that we want to construct an is struct of, of, of type template type t. That is what it means. And then you can do the construction. So then we can... Watch some videos. If you're not familiar with this, watch uh, Stefan Lowerweight's talks. Uh, Array CTAD is awesome. Uh, he goes through 
a lot of why this is powerful and useful. And when you have watched that and you're really enthusiastic, you watch Timo Dumner's talk. It's a trap. <laughs> oh, it's the same year. Yes, it is. Uh, the good catch. The, the, the two of them are from SIPBCon the same year. Yes. But then we can write, is state any of idle, disconnected, disconnected? This works with all types. It's very explicit. There is little chance of uh, misunderstanding what this means, I think. But it's still Yoda speak. So, uh. And from there I just forgot it. Time passed. It's not exactly an important problem to solve, is it? <laughs> Who cares? But I am annoyed by code. All code, my own in particular. And then one day, two years later, I had this very brilliant idea. Is it too cute? I have a template, class template uh, any of that privately inherits from tuple that will go through y. And then we have a templated operator equals that makes the, uh, the call to the, the lambda that does all the uh, fold expression thing. It's but ugly. But you can see at the bottom, is any of 135 equals x, Yoda speak. But yeah. we'll get there. We'll get there. I'll, I'll clean it up a little bit. So any of, it's a template of t's, private inheritance from tuple. This is only because I'm amazingly lazy. It really should be a member variable. But the thing is that tuple has 18 constructors and they're really good and I, I won't write the constructors as good as tuples. So I'm just saying, hey, it's under the hood I'm a tuple and by the way, I'm using tuples uh, constructors. So I got these 18 for free, yay. Laziness for the win. And then a templated operator equals that uses apply. Apply is super powerful if you're not familiar with it. Uh, apply takes something invocable, something that you can call, and it takes uh, a tuple. And then it calls this callable thing with each of the members of the tuple as the function called parameters. This is really, it's such a small thing, but it's really powerful. So, unfortunately, I have to do this ugly cast of star this into the tuple. Mm. That is not pretty. But then I have the, the lambda that does the fold expression, as, as you have seen several times before. And then we want a, a, an op operator equal with the uh, operands swapped, because then we can get away from the from the Yoda speak. And now I can write, assert the state is equals any of idle, disconnected and disconnected. And this is so silly, but it makes me really happy. <laughs> <laughs> because this is cute. It is, there's no fluff in here. It, it's, it, it, it really states things the way you would speak if you talk to a, a colleague. I want to assert that the state is any of idle, disconnected or disconnected, yes. What if I had a scoped enum? Then it, there would still be a lot of repetition. Oh, there, we're going to see so much more repetition. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Don't worry about that. But it, it, but my, my nerd heart is melting here. This is, <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Let's have a look at what, what this costs. Because this is kind of a lot of interesting construction here. So I have this state type. Sorry for it cutting out a little bit on, on, on the right here, but you trust me, it's the same thing. Uh, any of inherits from tuple, the deduction guide. I have a class C here, which, which happens to own a state and a function. And this function, I, 
I'm now using the preprocessor to compare writing the uh, assertion as, you, as a normal expression, just state equals idle or state equals disconnected, etc. All this uh, annoying repetition. Or this super amazing, very cool state equals any of. And the pane to the right has this macro set and the pane to the left does not. Spot the differences. The, 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 the assertion strings are different. The code is identical. So the compiler has actually seen through all this. It, it generated as good code as you can get. So what if we know it to 02 instead of 03? I don't know. Shall we try with 02? Yeah, sure. Let's, let's, let's try that. Uh, it's still the same, I think. Yeah. Can you work with 01? 01. No, other, no. <laughs> Sorry, Henrik. Uh, what if it was strings instead? Uh, I don't know. It's the answer. The, the, the question was, what, what if there are strings? Uh, I haven't checked, so I don't know. I know it will work with strings, but I haven't checked the result of the uh, compiled code. But, um, yeah, we can check this. Uh, I, I won't do it live, sorry, but we can do it in, in the break. So, so far so good, I think, at least for this concrete problem. And now we add some more relational operators like operator less than. And we can write this code and it's, it, this is just so beautiful. <laughs> While any of A, B and C is less than zero. This is amazing. Oh, this is a pretty cool language we're working with. Uh, just briefly, I won't bore you with many details. It's, just, it's the same setup. I just have a, a loop here with some variables A, B, C, and either a while with A less than zero, B less than zero, or this any of. And you can see that it's, it's, it's the same code. They're absolutely identical. So, this is good, but this is not good. <laughs> we have two huge blocks of code here that are absolutely identical, save for the few characters that are in these green blocks. So, I had an artificial problem that wasn't really a problem and I solved it and introduced a serious problem. This is the kind of dry violation that you don't want to have. <laughs> this is problematic. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, sure, it, it is library code, it's not application code, code. That, is, that is true. But this is the kind of repetition where if you somewhere al along the line make a change to the implementation of any of you will miss one of these. <laughs> that's why you make it a macro. And that's why you make it a macro, <laughs> yeah. Um, would you please leave? <laughs> no. I don't think it's the first presentation I'm going to make where I'm not using macros. But I, I, I know I usually do for, for horrible reasons, but I'm not going there. Not today. Uh, ah, why did I go there? So th this is bad, right? Th th this is bad. Because we have an awful lot of repetition. But we, we, can, we can make some improvements. I uh, have a, another function template or elements, a higher order function that takes an f that is callable and a tuple. And we use apply to call this, uh, uh, this lambda that, that captures a function. It's okay that it captures by, by reference because it's only used locally. It's, it's harmless. And it, it returns... You, you spot the change here in the uh, fold expression. It, it, it folds over the application of the function f for each value and do a, a logical OR. 
So I can write the code like this instead. Return all elements and the just to check for an equality and for less than. It's, it, it's not ideal, but it, it's an improvement. It's a lot less, a lot less of uh, repetition. And since uh, or elements explicitly takes uh, a const reference to a, a tuple of unknown t's, we actually don't need to use the ugly cast here, even though it's still private inheritance. Uh, stood apply takes just a, a t ref ref and it doesn't understand that any of is uh, is a tuple, so it doesn't work. But here, here, this works. So we're not quite there, but it's better. I would argue. Do you have a question on it? Would it be possible to use std less and std equals? Would it be possible to use std less and std equals? We'll get there. We'll get there. I think we can. But first, let's have a look here at... Where am I? At this code, where I'm, I'm using these OR elements instead. So that that extra level of indirection still didn't have any any cost on the generated code. So that is good. Compilers are awesome. Compiler writers are awesome. So we're safe so far. Okay. So I want to write an all of. I should say that this morning uh, Tony Van Erd reminded me that it's actually wrong to call it all of. It should be each of, because I want to check if each of the values fulfills a condition. All of is, is, uh, can, can be misunderstood. But I did not want to <laughs> rewrite my slides. <laughs> but now I have said it, just so you know. Think, think each of when you see all of, okay? So I make a minor change. I make or elements instead of being a function. I say that or elements is a type, a struct that, that has a, a, a member function that is actually the the function body of the old or elements function. And all problems in computer science are, are solved with adding adding another level of indirection, except those that are caused by having too many levels of indirection. And this is not one of the latter kind, so we can add another level of indirection. So I have, instead of an all over any of type, I have an op t. This really screams for having a better name. Suggestions are welcome. Uh, where you see that we have an op type parameter, and the rest is the same, except that the call to apply is op colon colon apply. So we can now tweak the behavior of this by giving it different types op. And then we need to do any of uh, inheriting from, from our op t with or elements and get the constructor from there. And this is ugly. And in, the, in a better world, we, we could do things better here, but we can't, unfortunately. But then we do an and elements where we just change it to to logical and, and we have an all of that inherits from op t and, and elements instead. So we have double the functionality for very little extra code. That is good. That is good. We're getting somewhere. Uh, as I was about to say, in a better world, we could have deduction guides on, uh, on template aliases, but Unfortunately, we can't, and that's why we need to make all of uh, a new type that inherits from opt instead of, of uh, just having this alias and have the deduction guide say, yeah, all, all of with t's create an opt of and elements and t's, but uh, it doesn't work that way. Huh. 23, maybe. One can hope. I have actually no idea if there are proposals for that, but it would be nice. So. Another level of indirection. Is this getting expensive yet? And elements. Op t that calls op apply. All of the deduction guide. I have this loop still. 
absolutely identical code still with this uh, difference. You can see how it highlights different parts of the code depending on which one it uses. So that is good. Uh, we may have opinions about the usability of these kind of constructs, but we can at least confirm that it doesn't cause code bloat from the compiler. So, are we nearly there yet? Actually, this was uh, as long as I had originally planned the construction, but uh, the the presentation. But uh, I'm a little bit stupid, so I got this idea that lambdas are really cool. So I'm going to do this all over again, but with lambdas, because this is weird. So we have a tuple. A tuple is a lambda that returns a lambda. Can you see how I can claim that this is a tuple? I call tuple with some parameters. It returns a, a lambda that has captured those parameters. We can call that lambda with some function and return whatever that function returns when it in, in its turn is called with all the captured members, capt all the captured data. So the function could, for example, be get the first element, get the nth element, count the number of elements. So it's a tuple. It's, it's not a standard tuple by any means. It's actually a pretty horrible tuple, but it is a tuple. And it fits this problem very nicely. So when I write tuple ABC, it returns a, a lambda that has captured ABC as its values. And when we call it with this lambda that checks if each of the elements is, uh, are greater than zero, we get exactly the, the functionality that we had before. This is uh, all of greater than. Lambdas are cool. And then AND elements. Uh, pretty much the same way, but and elements takes a function and which we capture and when called with a number of elements it, it returns the, the fold over calling the, the function, captured function for each of the elements logically anded together. Are your synapses beginning to hurt yet? So in this case we rewrite this uh, as a, sim a simpler function. Just say, take one argument, return whether it's greater than zero. And we call add this to the uh, and elements higher order function. And that one is passed to the tuple. So it will expand to, in this case, a is greater than zero and b is greater than zero and c is greater than zero. And then an ugly construction, bind R8, RH for right hand. The C++20 library does have a bind front that is more generalized than this. This one is uh, very simple. It doesn't have a bind back. Uh, but what, what this thing, bind, bind right hand, does, it, it takes a function and it's assumed that this is a function that can be called with two parameters. And it takes a value. And this value is bound to the right hand. So when we call bind right hand with a function and a value, we get back a lambda that has captured both those. And when the lambda in turn is called with left hand, we call the function with left hand and that, that we got as a parameter and right hand that we had captured. So this is neat. And then, oh no, stood greater. So I can say that greater than is something that takes a, a value and we bind that value as the right hand side to std greater. So now I can write this as you have on the lowest line. I don't know if you can see that in the back. Tuple ABC and elements greater than zero. So greater than zero is something that is callable and when it's called it calls std greater with whatever that value is and zero. 
And then we have AND elements that, that folds these together over a logical AND. Whew. We have the basis now to, to get somewhere. So we have tuple AND elements equal to, greater than, less than, you name it. We have our friend op t. I'm still waiting for a better name. So we say assert all of a, b, and c. And that means that uh, we have this new function all of that re returns an op t of and elements and a tuple of the um, parameters to all of. An op t constructor takes a function and a tuple and just saves them as uh, its members. And when we call greater than zero, it, it calls the, the greater than operator, which calls apply greater than. Apply here is not std apply, it's a, a local member function, a private one, a helper, that calls the tuple with the func, which was and elements, with f. f is greater than t. So this again becomes all of abc greater than zero it expands to a is greater than zero, and b is greater than zero, and c is greater than zero. Well, this is neat. This is wild. But there's not a lot of repetition going on here. I like that. If anyone can figure out how to use a Starship operator for this, I'm really happy. But I haven't, found, I haven't figured that out yet. But please, please get in touch if you, if you do. Uh, small thing that I wanted to mention. Uh, in these cases, uh, the, the function uh, and elements, uh, or, or elements, uh, has no size, really. Or they have, they have no members, rather. Which means that technically they can be seen as having no size, but all types in C++ have a size, they, because all objects of unrelated types must have a unique address. But in this case, C++20 added uh, an attribute, no unique address, where you can say, I promise not to care that whether it overlaps something else or not. I pre pretend it's zero size. Paul? And in the last uh, implementation, like before the break, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the A, B, and C could be of different types. Yes, A, B, and C ca can be it's of different types case. here. That is still the case. Uh, A, B, and C are the parameters to the uh, auto dot 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 t's in, in all of. So they can be anything. The, the, this will compile if and only if the, if the operations make sense. Yeah. And we will get absolutely horrible compilation error messages. And I will get there. <laughs> <laughs> We have to grow this step by step, don't worry. Although that solution is not pretty, I'm afraid. But uh, hey, <laughs> this is neat. Yeah. Yes, hold on. Is a, is a, is a tempered argument. So, so if someone passes you a, a lambda with member variables, it would have space. What happens then? Uh, Holland's observation was uh, that the uh, the function here is a template parameter. We don't know if it has, a, it, it can have something captured. It can have, take space. And what happens then? And the honest answer is that I don't know. I think it's okay. Because that what happens then is that it will consume the space. I think it is that no unique address means that it just won't, uh, it, it won't take any place if if it is actually legal to do so. Uh, the reason I think that that is probably correct is that you can do a similar thing already today with, um, uh, uh, since forever basically, C++ 98, even before standardization, you had something called the empty base class optimization, where you, instead of having it as a, a member, you say, I inherit from it. And if the thing you inherit from has uh, no data, then the, th they don't contribute to the size of the object. So, but it, so that's why I think it's probably the way that it, it, it's okay if the function has a size, but uh, I don't know for sure. Happy with that answer? Good.
ready to be blown away. Compilers are awesome. This is my last uh, Compiler Explorer example. And I'm going to deviate a little bit from what I had before. So we have tuple, or func, which should be or elements, uh, sorry. Uh, we have bind right hand equal to less than. I'm only going to use equal to in this example. We have opt that has uh, these, uh, this tuple and the function uh, apply equal equality any of in this case. Now I have a function that takes a string view and we want to find where the first white space is in the, the string referenced by the string view. So we can write this as a std find if s begin s end and why not reuse equal to? We have already written it. Equal to is a higher order function that takes something that can be equality compared, returns a, a, a lambda that when called calls operator equals on that captured value uh, and the, the parameter. So I'm searching for anything that is equal to any of tab, line feed, carriage return and space. And if we got the end, we return minus one to say that uh, there was none, or we return the position in the string view. So what does the compiler do with this? Well, 29 instructions, on well, 28. So we get the size. If the size was empty, we're done. OK, yeah, that makes sense. Move a very large value into R8. What the? No, it's not negative one. Look at the hex. I can't see from here. <laughs> hex OX 1002600000. Zero, 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 zero. Is it packed TRN space? Four bytes. Four bytes packed in the one. No. This is a bit mask. Uh, it's a 64 bit value. It happens to have bits 9, 10, 13, and 32 set. Do you know your ASCII table? <laughs> <laughs> Tab is 9, line feed is 10, carriage return is 13, white space is 32. <laughs> so then we read a byte, we check if it's greater than 32, then, we then it's not a candidate, it's, it's not a match. So we just go, go past. O otherwise, we take the value that is 32 or less, check if the bit is set in the bit mask. If it is, we're, we have found our, our match. <laughs> Compilers are awesome, aren't they? This is... <laughs> Sorry? Was this GCC or...? Uh, this is Clang. Clang. Uh, but I have compared this, uh, GCC does the same thing and Believe it or not, MSVC does too. <laughs> <laughs> but is it fast? Yes. It, it, is it fast was the question. Yes, it is fast. Uh, it's uh, super fast. <laughs> it's really good. So, yeah, we, we, we can get some pretty awesome thing by writing code in, in fairly high abstraction levels. And the compiler just does amazing things. What's not to love? <laughs> <laughs> but we can improve this. Um, we can improve this. Const expert. Const expert all the things, always, every, everywhere. It's actually it's super simple. We just add some const expert here. We don't have to do that on the lambdas because from C17 and forward, lambdas are const expert if they can be. So that was it. OK, good. Perfect forwarding. You may have noticed that everything I've done, there are copies, 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 copies everywhere. Uh, in the case of, of uh, these examples where it's just uh, simple int, the, the compiler shortcuts everything, it doesn't matter. It, but but it, it can mean something if we have more complicated types. Conditional no except. This can be important because some standard algorithms does uh, 
re reflect on the uh, operations and the types to see if if there are if they if they if the compiler knows or rather the library implementation knows that, that nothing can throw it can sometimes make more cheaper constructions because it doesn't have to take care of how to roll back failed operations or such and explicit return type and that is a question there about uh, what happens if you call all of with types that don't work with the operation and that is why you want this explicit return type so that you you want to be able to see already when you write the expression that this is not going to work we remove this from the overload set we get a compilation error that says i'm sorry i cannot do all of strings greater than zero and related to that is also if you want to this is more for advanced uh, library writers if you want to prune the overload sets such that you do one thing for one set of parameters and another thing for another set of parameters uh, a bit more advanced but uh, but still something that sometimes is desirable so Svena trickery so let's go on with this perfect forwarding that is not very difficult so we have this uh, and elements that takes a function and is callable with a number of elements. So we can say that we, we, we use a, a forwarding reference for the function and do this really ugly capture where we say that inside the lambda when I return to func I mean a perfect forwarding of func from whatever type it was. If, if, if it was an uh, R value then move it, if it's a, an L value then copy it. And this thing is, shall we say it's not good looking? C20 gives us a, a hilariously weird syntax to say that, yeah, and this lambda, by the way, I, I have template type parameters. So brackets, angle, angle brackets, brackets, parentheses, uh, and curly braces is now legal code. Just so you know, and it does nothing. Um, but having the type explicit can sometimes be help a little bit because now I can write the stood forward T instead of this decal type. It's, it's not a big thing, but it, it, at least for me it helps a little bit. And then we have the tuple that copies all the all the members. And in C plus 14 or 17, there is absolutely no way to do per perfect forwarding of these. We can capture them as copies or we can capture them as references, but we cannot move them in. Uh, since we really like really weird syntax, C plus 20 gives us this dot 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 t equals, which does perfect forwarding for the whole parameter pack. And why on earth the dots are in the beginning there, I have no idea, don't ask me. It's but ugly, but it works. It works. So we now we can capture the entire parameter pack with perfect forwarding. Mind, it's still making uh, new instances. We have values that are captured. Uh, there is no syntax available for saying that if if a parameter is an L value reference, I want to capture by reference, and if it's an R value, I want to capture as a, an instance. It's not super difficult to make such a wrapper. I'm not going to tell you how to do it because it's really dangerous if you don't know exactly what you're doing and I cannot prevent you from shooting yourself in the foot but I don't have to provide you with a loaded and cocked gun and aim, aimed for you. So on your own heads, so be it. You know that it can be done. I advise you probably shouldn't. And again, we can use the, the explicit uh, template type here to, to get rid of the internal decal type. It's not a biggie, but it's something. And then we're back here with another, another bunch of uh, forwards and whatnot. And the code is not as pretty anymore, is it? <laughs> uh, this is uh, It's not super problematic, but it, it, it's not nice. I'm not happy. So, perfect forwarding. Doable, it uglifies the code a little bit, it's not terrible, but uh, conditional, no except. 
So our tuple, we must ensure that calling the function, we, we, we check if calling the function can throw, then we say that the tuple can throw. And so the first no except says, the, the outer no except, both of them, they, they, uh, they take a, a Boolean parameter to say, this is no except if the inner value is, is true or false. So the inner no except is, is a predicate, it checks, is, can, if I call func with t's, could it throw? If it could, then it's no except true, it, no except false, sorry. Uh, or it, it's a little bit problematic here. And th then we have the no except, no except for the uh, and elements where we also need double parentheses because the, uh, the fold expression must be parenthesized and the inner no except takes a parenthesized expression. So we get parentheses for the expression and parentheses to express the fold expression. Pretty. And there is absolutely no way around this repetition, Hendrik. There is no way to move the function body into the function declaration. There is no way to move the function body into the function declaration. Um, that's what we're doing. Here. That is, yeah. Um, not that I know of. But uh, I'll, 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 I would. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. You said the M word. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> For, for the recording, M word in this case was macro, not, not the, the other M word. <laughs> so the, this works, and we add a number of more of these, and uh, everything is terrible. <laughs> it, it really is. And then we go to explicit return type, where we say that, yeah, and the return type is the decal type of calling func with T's. And decal type of calling func with elements and with the full expression with uh, ands and the double parentheses. And this is getting really silly. <laughs> <laughs> and there is no other way around this than to write a macro. And this is horrible. And I recommend that you watch uh, this lightning talk by Vittorio Romeo from uh, 2017, where it's titled, You Must Type It Three Times, where he asks the obvious, why can't the compiler do this for us? Because the compiler already has all of the knowledge. And he actually proposes a, a syntax for doing this, and as far as I know, it was shot down in flames. Um, but and there, there may be good reasons for that, I don't know. There may be ex excellent technical reasons why that proposal didn't fly. But I really think we need something for this, because th this really is silly. So, yeah. I'm sorry, I don't have a solution for this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it is solvable with the language as we have it today. So, that was Modern Techniques for Keeping Your Code Dry. I'm Bjorn Faller. Remember, full expressions are awesome. Tuple and apply is awesome, it's powerful. Higher order functions are awesome. Lambdas are awesome. C++ lambdas are awesomer. Compilers are awesome, you saw the examples, right? It's uh, absolutely amazing. No acceptance fee, return type is awful. Absolutely awful. And sweating the small stuff makes you really annoyed with code. But it can lead to some pretty neat stuff. Thank you. <laughs> this QR code goes for the uh, uh, feedback uh, survey if you want to provide things or talk to me after the, uh, in the break or afterwards. Uh, as uh, Harald mentioned, Th this was a training run for me for the uh, NDC Tech Town conference where I will present this uh, in a week. So if you can help me improve this, I would really appreciate it. Um, questions? What about compiling times? What about compilation times? I have not measured, but they will suffer. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I don't know how much. Mathieu? Uh, for maximum C++ 20, you should have no discard on the bools. I should have no discard on the bools, yeah. Can I have... 
I, I late, in the later code, I had no disc I had auto. I can have no discard auto, can't I? I'm not sure. Pretty sure you can uh, it, it should be possible. Yeah. Right. Thank you. I, I will add that. I will add that to to the presentation. Uh, more questions. Yes. Yeah, I just want to say uh, I think it's awesome that you managed to capture why Lisp is both amazingly beautiful and cool and horrible, horrible. <laughs> 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 yeah, okay. So, yeah, th the uh, observation was for you if you didn't hear it uh, that in a C talk, I, I managed to explain how Lisp is both, both um, awesome and absolutely horrible. Yeah. Uh, more questions? Okay. Snacks and beer. Thank you. <laughs>